this morning. Can you stand to our feet as we welcome you as into worship and praise and worship and we welcome the presence of the Lord in this place. I cast my eyes on Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. His body wounded Wounded by tears, Messiah still, and on that tree, his body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone and oh praise the name of the Lord our God oh praise his name forevermore for endless days we will see Let's try that out. I think we came for church this morning. He is risen. Risen indeed. 
Hallelujah. How many of you are grateful to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. We may not have full sun, but we got the sun of God shining in heaven. And we are so glad that you came to worship with us this morning. Praise God. Look at your neighbor. Say, praise God. God's got something for you this morning. Hallelujah. Well, this morning... As we're continuing with our worship, you know, we just sing, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Our God is alive. How many of you know that? Amen? He's not dead. He's alive. Somebody say, he's alive. Amen. And that means that there's life in us because we that follow in Jesus have life on the inside. And I just want to read a quick scripture in Matthew chapter 28, because this day all around the world, many have already celebrated in different nations, uh, different time zones. And so we're just continuing in with what already has been happening as we rejoice that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. You know, there's many other gods that are in the tomb, but our God is not in the tomb. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, alive and well, and that's good news. Amen. Matthew chapter 28 says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began, the crucifixion had just happened, that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear and they became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see. You will see him. Behold, I have told you these things. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. They had great joy because they found out that Jesus had said, I will arise. This body will be destroyed, but I'm going to come back. And I'm going to be resurrected. Because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And so this morning as we worship and you worship and join with us, we are alive in Christ. We have a joy in our hearts that there was a joy with Mary. There was a joy with those that found out, wait a minute, what do you mean he's not in the tomb? No, 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 I saw Jesus crucified. I saw what they did. They, 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 he was broken, his body. No, he's not there anymore. He's alive and well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. Let's sing this. And chains are broken. You have spoken. It is. Let's try that again. Hallelujah. Here we go. Put your hands together. Chains are broken. You have spoken. It is finished on the cross. How I'm living for this purpose. Jesus, you have set me free.
morning, you know, when we say we are free, we know because what our God has done for us. Amen. And so somebody may say, well, I don't understand. Jacob, why are you up there? You're all smiling and grinning. Oh, that's really nice for you. But you know, we were testifying yesterday. I know what God has done for me because my father was an alcoholic for over 15 years and God set him free. And I'm, I'm, I'm a product of, of five generations of alcoholics and I stand as a sober man, never have touched alcohol and it's not about that, but what I am saying is the power of Jesus is what came and transformed my family. The power of Jesus is what came in and gave us a hope and a purpose and a call. And so this morning, some of you can shout out that God has done something for you. That God has brought something on the inside. That he's brought you through something. He sets you free. So this morning, can we just let out a praise? Can we just begin to let out a shout that the power, the resurrection power has raised us? Just 
Jesus appeared over 12 times in the Bible to people as little as one person and to crowds as big as 500. And today, today, I feel like that Mary who encountered the empty tomb and encountered the resurrection power of Jesus and left that place and said, he is alive. He has risen. I think that Jesus is alive not because we read a story about it, but because this room is full of people that have also encountered the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Jesus is alive today. Amen. Jesus is alive today and we bear witness of his resurrection power. 
and death couldn't hold them, the grave couldn't keep them. And you know, I believe that the angel came and rolled away the stone, not for Jesus to come out, but for us to come in, for us to witness what really took place, for us to witness what God has done through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. So this morning, we don't just celebrate the death, but we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate the victory. And we can say with faith, with hope, that Jesus is alive today. Amen. So I want you to shout this out. Jesus is alive. Come on, shout it out. Come on, let's sing this chorus one more time. And I want you to just let praise come out of your spirit. Let, let you again witness that moment of resurrection power in your life. Come on, let's sing this out. Let's lift our hands all over this place. Oh, praise the one who paid my he is risen. every person that is here and this morning is about celebrating a moment that shook the history of this earth it changed everything this moment changed everything for humanity since this moment there's a hope that is living and we share in that hope and we know and so right now we just want to welcome you together with my wife want to welcome you to Church of Truth. If it's your first time, second time, third time, if maybe this is one of those days where you just ended up in church because it's Easter, we believe that Jesus loves you and he wants to touch your life this morning and he has proven his love by dying on the cross. There's a lot of people that can say that they love you, but Jesus didn't just say it. Jesus proved it and he went and he died on the cross in our place to show us and demonstrate to us his great and perfect love so we just want to welcome you we want to thank you for joining us this morning let's just welcome all the guests all the people that are visiting us today and before you sit down before you sit down I want you to get out of your row because church is about people and I want you to just get out of your row take a minute go ahead and take a minute and just go and say, say hi to a couple people tell them about Jesus in your life tell them about the fact that he is risen Meet some new folk if you haven't seen them before. And as you're taking your seat, as um, Roman already mentioned, we wanted to greet the first time guests here. And if we can please just raise your hand and we just want to welcome you and give a huge CO2 welcome to you. If there's any first time guests and the ushers will uh, pass out a connection card, please lift up your hand. And we just want to say thank you for joining us on this uh, Sunday morning. 
And also, we would like to greet our online guests um, we are, or on, online viewers. We are so um, happy that you guys are um, here with us uh, this morning. And um, we have so many people watching from all over the world. And thank God for uh, the 21st century and this media and what it can do. And we can reach so many um, people. We get um, emails all the time from people saying that, hey, we're watching you from, from all over, really. Um, so uh, we just welcome you and be attentive uh, throughout the service because I believe that God wants to even do something in your lives as well. There where you're at, um, at home and at, you know, wherever you're watching. And I also, um, I actually just have this uh, word that God actually wants to bring peace to somebody here. You know, there's, um, there's been peace that's been taken away from you, and God wants to restore that. And today, as we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, He wants to restore that peace and take that fear away because that fear doesn't belong to you. He wants to restore that and give you peace back because... You, this is what Christ came down here for, to be able to free us and give us life in him. So just receive that this morning as you, um, as you just pray, as you um, just be attentive in this service. I believe that God wants to do something in your life. So praise the Lord. And so I want you to just uh, pay attention to the screens as we share a couple of testimonies of God's power. I was raised in a Buddhist Vietnamese family and we would go to temple on Sundays and we would meditate and worship Buddha basically. I didn't know Christ at the time. I knew that uh, Christ existed but I was foreign to it and I knew God existed but we would respect God at the same time we would be Buddhist and this is how we would practice. Some major things happened to my life. My brother passed away, my parents got a divorce, things were hitting rock bottom in my family, my two younger siblings were still very young, and just a lot of major things have happened. Um, a young couple from uh, church came to our house and talked to us, shared with us about the Word of God, shared with us about Jesus and how Jesus is the bridge to God and the only way to God. Um, I went through seven years of just like being a baby Christian and learning every step of the way and growing more and just learning more about being a Christian and getting involved in church and then things that happened um, to where I just felt the urge to go to the ER and didn't know what was going on and I felt like a sense of death was upon me or near me and I was afraid. So I, I was in the hospital um, admitted and they put me on medication. I felt like a piece of fruit, like I just felt like I couldn't do anything. The uh, medication made me very sleepy all the time. Like very, I was like very sleepy and I just could not kind of function. Like I could only eat, sleep and just kind of do very simple, minimal uh, activities. So I couldn't, you know, go to school or have a job or anything. I actually had been battling with depression and just a lot of different disorders that they said I had, like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, bipolar schizoaffective disorder, just like different, just they, whatever they could come up with, what they thought I had, but I don't think that was true. It was just, they didn't know what I had. So I was just being experimented on with medications. And then finally one day at, when, um, during church service, I was really like in tune with the Holy Spirit and just like I felt like God was going to heal me. So I finally took that leap of faith and I, um, I stopped taking the medication. I had um, some people pray for me and then um, someone prayed for me in church. And then after that, when I went back to my seat from the church service, I felt this like anointing, like this like riveting kind of like feeling that something was kind of like working around in my mind it just felt like this healing process ever since then i have been free and i am not sick i don't have any i was like right from that point on i'm completely normal and i haven't been on any medications it takes you know faith trusting in god 100 percent and just the hope and that god will provide for you know giving you a good hope in the future uh, my favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 29 11 because every time I hit like a, uh, a roadblock or a trial that I'm going through 
that that Bible verse has always carried me through everything and I've always like held on to that hope in the future that God will provide and he has promised for for his like for that he will carry us through all things Is our God not good? He is so good. He is alive today. He is the same God that walked this earth 2,000 years ago, and he lives today to touch each one of us. He deserves the glory. Amen? Come on. And I'm just so excited on this Easter Sunday to share this time with my, my church family, and we have yet another special announcement. Uh, we love doing this. We love when couples fall in love when families start to form and I want to present yet another couple that wants to join their life together and the the girl's name is Vera Lapina so can we greet Vera Lapina and the guy that fell in love with her the guy that decided, you know what, I want to spend the rest of my life with this young lady. His name is Dima Yermalenko. Dima, come on in. What a special moment. This is always exciting to present yet another family. You know, the enemy is against families, but Christ is for families. Christ is for families because he loves, God is love, and God creates the love that is, that is whole, that is wholesome, that creates healthy families, and so we bless you guys. We're so excited that you guys have made this decision and that you guys are making it on the foundation of Christ. That is the only unshakable foundation. I want to honor the parents. Uh, the parents of uh, Vera are Anatoly and Vera Lapin. They're somewhere here, I believe. Can you guys stand up? We'd like to. There they are. Can we greet them? And Dima's dad is Peter Yermalenko. Thank you so much for raising your children, raising them in, in, in uh, blessing, in teaching them who Christ is. And we just want to pray for you guys. We want to have you guys continue this path and on your path to marriage, just really trust God. Trust God in everything. You know, He is the provider and He's also the standard. Don't do things on your own accord. Do things through prayer, do things through the word, and you will be blessed from the very beginning. Can we get up and pray for them? God, we bless. We bless Dima and we bless Vera, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you are, you are uniting them, Lord God, and you're giving them this opportunity to start their family, Lord. And we thank you that the enemy does not want this happiness, God, but you've already provided and it doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do, God. You've already provided a path forward for them. You said that your thoughts are above our thoughts, God. And your ways are above our ways, Lord God. And you said that you have thoughts to bless us, to prosper us, Lord God. So we bless this young family that's starting, Lord God. And we thank you for your protection and your blessings over their life, Lord God. To you be all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. As we continue. Oh, please. Sorry. Can I? Sweet. And before I get off the stage and let the worship team lead us continually into worship, I want to speak about offering really quick. I want to read out of Luke chapter 7. You guys can remain standing. This won't take too long. But I want to read Luke chapter 7 where Jesus comes to a Pharisee's house. And it says in verse 36, then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. 
there was a certain creditor who had two debtors one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. and when they had nothing with which to repay him he freely forgave them both tell me therefore which of them will love him more simon answered and said i suppose the one whom he forgave more and he said to him you have rightly judged then he turned to the woman and said to simon do you see this woman i entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head you gave me no kiss but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time i came in you did not anoint my head with oil but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil therefore i say to you her sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but to whom little is forgiven the same loves little when we bring our sacrifices to god the only value we can bring is when it is brought out of love. You know, love continually gives. I know when I fell in love with my wife, I couldn't wait to give her everything I had. I remember buying that first car for her. I remember buying the ring. And you know, I wasn't rich, but whatever I had, I just wanted to give because I fell in love with her. And in the same way, Christ, He will be given from our lives when we fall in love with Him. And you say, how can I fall in love with Christ? The answer is simple. Remember what He forgave you. Remember what He forgave you. He says, to him who much was forgiven, loves much. I for one have been forgiven a lot of things. I love my God because I am forgiven. And I challenge you today to think about what's been forgiven in your life. Think about what God has done for you. Think about how much He's already changed in your life. And you will see that desire to give, the desire to give Him everything. God doesn't deserve 10%. He doesn't deserve 30%. He doesn't deserve 45%. He deserves it all. God deserves our life completely. Amen. Let's just pray for this offering. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the opportunity to bring into your house, Lord, out of the love that we have, recognizing what's been given to us, recognizing how much has been forgiven. Lord, thank you so much that you've come to this earth and you died on the cross for each one of us. And you raised back to life, God. You were raised back to life and you live, Lord. And because you live, we live. God, and therefore all things that belong to us are yours. Take it, God. Use it at your pleasure, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord, let us bring more than 10%. God, but let us bring our lives completely. For you alone are worthy, Jesus. God, I bless every family here, and especially those who are having financial difficulties or physical difficulties. God, I pray, stretch out your hand, Lord, and, and come and answer those requests, God. I pray, provide for them, Lord God. Let them see the testimony of Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God, I thank you that you are a powerful God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
both came from broken homes, really shattered homes, you know, guns being pointed at heads. My mother told me, you're, you're worthless, you're, you're a filthy pig, you're just like your father, you're going to be alone your whole life, no one's ever going to love you. So yeah, so we moved oh, to yeah. Hawaii together and we got married and uh, started a family together. My wife was Seventh day Adventist, I was a Methodist, uh, but it was very loose Christianity. It wasn't really, you know, there was really no salvation experiences until someone at her work, I, who was always smiling and happy, I asked him why he was always happy and he witnessed to me. And so I took Maria to church and we went to church at like midnight. It was so late and we didn't think anybody would be there, but they were there, the lights were on and they were still praising the Lord. And we kind of looked at each other and just were shocked. And we went in and she got saved that very first night. We went to church for 16 years in Hawaii and we left and in the middle of moving was multiple disasters happened. We were leaving Hawaii hurt. We'd been hurt by, uh, by our, somebody really important to us. And so when we came here, uh, we were practically homeless. We'd been sleeping on people's floor for six months. We had reached a point where we just said, that's it, we're not going to church anymore. We didn't, we never turned our backs on God. We just, we just couldn't find a church that we really liked and, and we gave up looking. Israel was maybe a junior or sophomore, but he had befriended a, a boy named Joe. And so we would take Joe home on occasion. Then Joe invited Israel to church. So I think Israel had been going to church for about five or six months and we're very protective over our kids. And so for one of our kids to come home and tell us they're gonna get baptized at another church that we've never been to, and no less a Russian church, was, and for us to be okay with that, is a testament to the youth at Church of Truth. Because we, we, they had impressed us so much that we were willing to give our son to them, basically, and say, okay, baptize our son. And that's our first real experience with Church of Truth was our son being baptized at uh, Blake Merwin. At that point for me, I said, okay, I'll, I'll visit this church. I'm, I'm intrigued. I kind of like what I see, but I'm not, become, I'm not gonna become a member. I'm not going back to church. I started, you know, went going to a service here and a service there. And the first service that really impacted me was Roman speaked about uh, Jeremiah 33 and three, I think it was, about I will show you things that you've never seen. I will tell you things you've never heard and I will take you places you've never been. And I remember that sermon from our pastor really impacted me. I mean, everything we've been through, it really is, it's a love story. Everything we've been through and how, how we felt and how, how hurt we were. And for me, I love the Lord and I know you do too. And for us to say, I'm not going to ever going back to church was very hard for us. And now to look at our life, how completely changed it is. We were coming home from church like two weeks ago and Maria said, how do we get here? How do we end up in this place? Our friends are all different. We live in a different house. We, everything in our life, is, I'm starting a business. I mean, just everything about our life has changed. And it's not like something we, we did. If I could say one thing to anybody out there, it would be, it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, what you've been through, how bad you've messed up. The past is a check that's already been cashed. God is all about the future. You think he's worried about what you did or what happened five years ago? He's, he's focused on the future. He's saying, come on, let's go, get up, let's go. I got big things for you. I want, I want to use you. I, want, they're, they're, I got people out there waiting for you to preach a sermon to them, to witness to them. He is not worried about the past. And God can take nothing and breathe into it and turn it into something amazing and use it for his kingdom. I don't care how hopeless it seems. Quit, don't look back. Look forward. Don't look down. Look up. Don't, don't rely on yourself. Rely on God. And don't forget that this, is, this isn't about anything else but your relationship with Jesus and God. That's, all it, that's what it's about. It's a love affair.
This is one or two voices or stories out of thousands and millions of people all across the earth that are experiencing the presence of Jesus Christ. And their life is changed. Amen? And it's so awesome to come together and to celebrate such a day as this. For us, this is a day of celebration. Because this is not something we read about. We share in this victory. Amen? Because this victory was not about Jesus. This victory was about us. Jesus was already the way, the truth, and the life. But he has made it our way and our truth and our life through the death and resurrection. Jesus was God before he was crucified. Jesus was already that, but we couldn't access it. But through this victory, now we can access that way, that truth, and that life. And I'm so glad, you know, that Jesus came. I'm so glad that he found me, even when I didn't look for him. And you know, last night I was reading through all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and how Jesus was crucified and how he was risen and what took place after. And I just began to weep as I was reading these stories. And I found myself sitting there and saying, Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. And I saw how he revealed himself to those few, but I also saw myself how he has also came and revealed himself to me. And I said, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in the power of your resurrection. And isn't it amazing that over 2,000 years later, here's a room full of people that say, Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I know. I know that your presence changed my life. I don't just hear about you. I don't just read about you. But I have come to know you because you have made a way for me. And just for the next few moments, I want to talk about the power of his resurrection. And you know, when, when Jesus in John eleven twenty five, 25, he is answering to a question about Lazarus who's been dead for four days. And people said, you know, if you would have came a little bit earlier, if you... then everything would be fine. But Jesus knew about Lazarus and chose not to come. He wanted to show them who he is. He wanted to reveal his glory to the people that followed him. And even as he answers here, he says in verse 25, Jesus tells, t told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? You know, Jesus begins to refer to himself as the source of life. Jesus began to refer the same way he did to the Samaritan woman. He says, the water that I give you Again, referring to himself and saying, only I can satisfy you. Only I can complete you. And I have come here to make that known to you. I have come here to allow you to access this. So he says, I am the resurrection of, and life. And so I believe that through our faith, we can experience the power of resurrection. And you know, Jesus, he came to die. This didn't catch him by surprise. The Bible says that before the foundations of the earth, he was already ready to die for humanity. He came knowing exactly what would happen because the prophets for 700 years before already wrote in detail about his crucifixion. In detail about how he's going to be whipped and how he's going to be bruised and what's going to take place and the crown of thorns and all the pain that he would have to go through. So when he was born by the Spirit of God onto this earth, he wasn't born to, uh, 
you know, prove to everybody that he's God. He was born to die. He was born to be whipped and to be crucified and to be bruised. And the Bible says it was for our transgressions. So this has nothing to do with Jesus proving himself to humanity. It had everything to do with you being able to encounter Jesus. It had everything to do with making a way for us to get to him. And so the Bible says that he was born to die. And we had a, a service on Friday and we heard about the Garden of Gethsemane where he was sweating blood. Where he was in such pain and such a battle. And he said, Lord, if this cup may pass from me. And, and we heard that it had nothing to do with the pain he was about to go through. He was ready to endure the pain. But it had everything to do with him for the first time being apart from the presence of God. He never knew for eternity what that would feel like. Can you imagine? He existed for eternity always being one with the Father. Always being in the presence of God. And he knew that a time is coming where his life will be separated from the presence of God. And, and for a life to be separated from the presence of God is worse than death itself. He wasn't worried about death. He was worried about coming into that darkness, coming into that place where his presence would be absent from his life. And so he was ready to take this on for us. And the Bible says he endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. And you know when Jacob, in the book of Genesis, he blessed his son's children, Joseph's children, Ephraim and Manasseh. The Bible says that he, Joseph positioned them, the firstborn Manasseh and then Ephraim, and he wanted to have his father bless them and give them the firstborn blessing, Manasseh, but but, but we saw Jacob crossing his hands and putting the firstborn blessing upon Ephraim. And Joseph, he kind of got angry and he kind of got upset. What is this? This shouldn't be like this because Manasseh is the firstborn. And Jacob says, I know. I know. And this illustrates exactly what took place on the cross where Jesus took our place where Jesus took a position where he carried our penalty where he took our sin and what we deserved what we deserved God placed on Jesus and what Jesus deserved God placed on humanity and in that moment God also crossed his arms on the cross and he gave us life and put the curse on Jesus. He gave us victory and put defeat in that moment on Jesus. He took the weight of the world and placed it on Jesus. And he took grace and love and placed it on humanity. The cross speaks of God's grace and God's love for us. And we see that Jesus says this. In Matthew 27, he says, at about 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice. This is now on the cross. And he says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And in that moment, in that place, is when that separation happened we read um, a few verses down verse 50 then Jesus shouted out again and released his spirit at that moment the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom the earth shook the rocks split apart 
and tombs opened. The bodies of many, many godly men and women who had died were raised from the, de from the dead. In that moment, in that moment, in that very moment where Jesus was on the cross and when he took the weight of the world, when he took all of sin, when he took all of the penalty of sin, I want you to just acknowledge and see this, that through his death, he has made a way. And the first thing that happened as he released his spirit, as he breathed his last breath, the veil was torn. The rocks cracked. The earth shook. There was such a powerful moment that took place. The soldiers stood there and they were afraid and they were in amazement. And they said, truly, this man was different. Truly, this man was godly. Something took place where God, through Jesus' life, has dealt with our past. Where God, through Jesus' life, has destroyed the separation between man and God. And his resurrection now speaks to us about the life that we can have through Jesus. His resurrection now speaks to us. And, and I said this earlier, that the, the rock that was rolled away was rolled away for us. For us to see. For us to know what took place and you know i believe that yes we are free yes we are free from curse because jesus took all the curse of humanity upon himself yes we have salvation through jesus christ yes if we believe in jesus we can be saved but jesus was restoring his presence in our life jesus was restoring the fellowship that we lost and he appeared to them and he said this had to happen for the remission of sins for the redemption of humanity this had to happen and in closing I want you to open with me to the book of John verse 20 I mean sorry chapter 20 verse 24 book of John chapter 20 verse 24 this is a story about Thomas one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ it's interesting that this story about Thomas is only recorded in the book of John it mentions nothing of this story in Matthew Mark and Luke you know, John really had a special way of seeing things differently. We see the book of John very different from all the other authors that wrote about the life of Jesus. He really had a deeper view of things that took place. And so John here puts this story in the book, even though all the other three authors didn't write this at all and he puts this story and as I was reading it really touched my heart because Thomas here he was a twin brother and he's known as the twin brother but also as the doubting Thomas and can you imagine all the prophets writing about the Messiah writing about the crucifixion writing about the resurrection right it's not like it was new it was already spoken through the prophets and they studied the scriptures they studied the scrolls they they understood the information part of it and then jesus as they broke bread he told them that i will suffer and on the third day i will rise he told them personally so thomas got got to witness all of that where Jesus even spoke of himself about dying and about being raised to life he was there he heard it with his own ears he was one of the 12 he was always with Jesus Thomas was also the one who witnessed all the miracles that Jesus did Thomas 
witnessed all the things that Jesus did. Thomas was also the one who said, let's go and die with Jesus. Let's go and die for him. And after the death of Jesus Christ, despite the fact that there was an earthquake and the earth was filled with darkness and all the supernatural things that took place that made it obvious that Jesus really was the Son of God. And despite the fact that Jesus told them that he will rise on the third day. And despite the fact that all of the disciples are now telling Thomas that Jesus has appeared to us. Thomas says, I don't believe. And you know, it's interesting that this part is recorded in the Bible. And I want to read this for you. Verse 24 down through 29 one of the 12 disciples Thomas was not with the others when Jesus came this is when Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection we know that Jesus appeared to many people for 50 days before he ascended to heaven they told him we have seen the Lord but he replied I won't believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my finger into them, and place my hands into the wound in his side. I won't believe. You know, I could, I could almost see the condition of Thomas, who is broken by what took place, and despite all the evidence, Despite the other disciples telling him, we have seen Jesus. He says, I, I won't believe until I touch, until I put my finger through his pierced hands. Until I touch it, until I see it, I will not believe. And you know, I, 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 would, I would think that, Thomas, if you have zero faith, and after so much evidence, you still don't believe, well... You choose your own path. After I've done so much to prove myself to you, after I've done so much to show you who I really am, and you still don't believe, well, forget you then. Right? That's probably what I would say. I don't know about you, but that's probably what I would say. After I made it so obvious, and we know that when Jesus appeared to the two as they were walking, he began to tell them, about all the scriptures and he says you are foolish and he began to explain about all the scriptures about Jesus dying and rising again and when he walked to the town and they invited him to stay over with them when they broke bread they they in that moment only recognized that it was Jesus and then Jesus disappeared and they said to themselves didn't our hearts burn as he was talking didn't they burn even though they didn't recognize Jesus, but he was again explaining to them, don't you see that this had to happen? Don't you see that it's through the whole scripture and, and you're hearing that Christ is risen and you're still not believing? I would probably just forget about Thomas. There is no hope for Thomas. If Thomas doesn't believe now, he'll never believe. If Thomas doesn't receive now he'll never receive you know can I tell you something that though people might quit on you though people might give up on you though people might label you for all the wrong and from for all the continuous mistakes that you've done I want to tell you about somebody whose name is Jesus Christ whose love is deeper than any love you've ever experienced whose grace is greater than anything you've ever experienced and Jesus my Lord he comes and has another divine appointment with this name, this man named Thomas. And to me, that ministered to me because I feel like I was Thomas. I, I was Thomas. I grew up in a Christian family. I heard about God and I just went into the drug life. I went into the thug life and I, and I, and I doubted God and I thought faith is for weak people. 
Faith is for somebody that needs something to believe in. I was the Thomas, but despite of my unbelief, despite of my sin, despite of my rejection, despite of the pain I was in, Jesus still came. Jesus still showed up. And he said, Thomas, you want to see? You want to touch? Here I am. And we read eight days later, the disciples were gathered together again. And this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly as before, Jesus was standing among them. And he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. I believe that Jesus is ready to meet some Thomases this morning. Jesus is ready to come into your life and show himself to you. Despite of your unbelief, despite of your hardened heart, despite of the pain you've been through, despite of the family you were raised in, despite of the fact that your father abused you, despite of the fact that you lost your virginity, despite of the fact that you fell into drugs and fell into sin and lost it all, despite of all that, Jesus has not given up on you and he's ready to meet some Thomases that say I want to touch his hands I want to touch those holes I want to touch those wounds I don't believe but if he shows up I will believe I believe that this morning God wants to meet a Thomas God wants to meet you right there in the midst of your life he's not afraid of that challenge He's not afraid because his passion to reveal himself to you is greater than your passion to know him. The Bible says that he found us when we were not looking for him. In Hebrews it writes that he was tempted and tried. He was tempted in all areas of our life and it talks about the fact that he can relate to us. You think that God can't relate to you? You're wrong. He was tempted and tried in every area. He was man as much as he was God. He took upon flesh and he was 100% man and 100% God. And he experienced the same pain you experienced. He experienced the same betrayal, the same rejection, the same compassion, the same pain. He had a soul. He had a body. He had a spirit just like you. And the Bible says that he now can relate to you and have compassion on you and you can't say God but you don't understand but he says actually I do understand but you don't understand what it feels like to be in such a darkness and he says actually I do you don't understand what it feels like to be rejected you don't understand what it feels like to be in the place that I'm in and he says actually I do. I know what it's like to be apart from the presence of God. Because let me tell you, real hell is to be apart from His presence. And real heaven is to be in His presence. And you can experience heaven on earth even in this life because of His presence. Through his death and resurrection the veil was torn so that anyone who believes can access his presence you know i think it could sound like too good to be true for thomas i think it just sounded too good to be true it can't be it can't it can't happen and for some of you this forgiveness thing this 
healing thing, this new life thing just sounds too good to be true because you're so used to fighting. You're so used to breaking your own way for your life. You're so used to that saying that no one will do anything for you. You got to do it yourself. And that kind of attitude almost pushes away this kind of truth that says, hey, I've come to give you life. I've come to give you hope. I've come to give you peace. Oh, believe me, this will cost you something. You know what, you know what it will cost you? It will cost you your pain. You got to give up your pain to get joy. You got to give up your rejection to receive peace. You got to give up some stuff and it might sound like it's too good to be true. And so this morning I want to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to encounter Jesus like Thomas? Despite the fact that it might sound like it's too good to be true. It can't be true. It's not real. You know, it's like those phone calls we get. You have won a million dollars. You just need to call this number. And we hang up, right? Because we already know this, this cannot be real. It's too good to be true. Sometimes we pass up the call of God the same way. And he says, hey, you have received a new life, a new record, clean slate. You have received a new beginning and I'm calling on you and you hang up the phone because of your brokenness, because of your attitude, say, it's too good to be true. I won't even call back. I won't even respond to that kind of call. But I'm telling you that there is a grace that's too good to be true and it's revealed in Jesus Christ. I want us to stand to our feet this morning. Verse 29, it says, Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. As the worship team comes, I want you to just... I don't know what you're going through, but... You know, I, I had a different message for this morning and I, I just didn't feel the green light from God last night. And, and I just began to reread and I began to reread. And I felt like the Holy Spirit is telling me that there is Thomases that I want you to reach. I know that we're celebrating such a moment, but there's Thomases in this room who are still saying, I don't believe until... I put my finger into those peers' hands. I don't believe until I touch the wound on his side. I won't believe until I see. And the good thing, and I'm so glad that John recorded this, is that Jesus even came to Thomas. Jesus is ready to come and meet Thomas this morning. Let's lift our hands all over this room. Let's just begin to worship him. Let's just begin to acknowledge him. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your life. We thank you, Jesus, for the perfect sacrifice that you've made for us. We thank you that you have made a way. You refer to yourself as resurrection and life. And I pray that your resurrection power will touch every person in this room. Every person in this room. I pray that your resurrection power will begin to touch those dead areas of our life. God, I pray for hope to be birthed again. I pray for hope to come again. God, I pray for joy to come again and fill every heart. I pray for peace to come and fill. I pray for every brokenness to be healed. I pray for your resurrection power to touch every life in this place. We open up our hearts to you. We open up our life for you. And Jesus, we want to know you. We want to obtain you the way you obtained us. We want to know the power of your resurrection. We want to know the power of your resurrection in our life.
you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst from a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I want to speak to you this morning, and I believe that God is calling on you on this day is about you. This day of celebration is all about you. Jesus made it all about you. It's like that wedding that I heard about and they said, what can we bring as a gift? And they said, I want you to bring my different things. They made a list of things that they should bring so that they can give it back to the homeless. And they made their wedding about other people and Jesus is making his moment and his celebration all about other people. It's about you this morning. And I, and I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to show you Jesus this morning. Maybe you don't believe. Maybe you lived a life hearing about him. Or maybe you are in a place where you walked away like Thomas. You, you were with Jesus. You, you did see his power. But you're in a place where your heart is hardened and, and you want to say, Jesus, I, I, I want to touch you this morning. If that is you, I just want to welcome you to the front. Just welcome you to the front right now. Just take a step of faith and say today, I believe. I believe. I believe. Come on, as we sing, I want you to just come forward. If you need prayer, if you want to commit your life to Jesus Christ, if you want to experience His resurrection power this morning. celebration when you come out and say Lord I give you my life I surrender everything to you because without him we we can't do it without him we can't find true joy we can't find true hope we can't find true peace and maybe you're in that season where you're looking for it I just want you to just take a step of faith and come forward if you're with a friend that needs this right now why don't you just tell him hey I'll come out with you right now this is not about us seeing you. This is about you making that decision and taking a step and coming forward. Coming forward. Thank you so much. Let's just give them a hand as they come. Let's give them a hand. We celebrate this moment. This is what church is about. Thank you so much. I want to give just another couple minutes for those of you who need to make that decision this morning.
why don't you just come forward there's nothing weird about it there's nothing scary about it this is just saying Jesus I want to believe Jesus I, I want to know I want to touch your hands I, I, I want to I want to see you I want to experience you I don't just want to hear about you I don't just want to read about you but I want to experience your power in my life maybe you grew up in church but you haven't experienced him this is your moment this is what it's about thank you so much thank you I see you coming thank you come on there's more people here there's more people here hallelujah life over you we just want to open up the altars right now for you just as to come forward and to allow other people to stand with you in this season and this moment of your life so as we continue to worship take a step out and just come out we we are a church that prays we are a church that believes in the power of Jesus Christ and we believe that today is the day where everything can change where you can experience breakthrough in your life where the healing power of Jesus can touch your life come on just just take a step out right now step out in faith and just say God I need you God I need healing in my body God I need a breakthrough in this season of my life I want to agree I want to pray I want to believe today because your power is real
every person that is out up front that made a decision today to take a step of faith. We thank you, God, that your power is meeting them right there where they're at. Lord, we thank you for lives that are born again this morning. We celebrate, God, what you are doing. You're not the God of the past, but you're the God of today. You are alive today. You are moving today. You are changing lives today. You are healing today. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And as we close and we continue to minister to everyone up front, I want to close with this thought that the Bible says the same power. Say with me, the same power. power. Say it loud again, the same power power. that raised Christ from the dead now lives in me. I want you to say that with faith one more time because this is not like that power. This is not a measure of that power. It's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. It's the same power which death could not stand before. It's the same power which sin could not stand before, which curse could not stand before, which sickness could not stand before. And Jesus didn't just get raised by that power. He has given that power to everyone who believes. Oh, this has to stir up your faith. This has to get you to a place where you got to dance a little bit and shout a little bit and praise a little bit because you need to understand the resource that is on the inside of you. The resource that is on the inside of you. You don't have to drown in pity. You don't have to drown in depression. You can say the same power. The same power is now available to me. And I speak resurrection life over the dead things in me. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to say this with faith one more time. I'm believing that there is areas in our life that need the breath of God. That need the life of Jesus. That need a touch of resurrection power. And maybe we're looking for it from here. But if you're a believer and you believe in Jesus Christ, you got to release it from here. And you got to speak to that thing. You got to speak to that mountain. You got to speak to that situation. So right now, as we declare, we're going to go into praise and we're going to shout and we're going to praise and we're going to yell and we're going to declare out of faith stuff that you maybe never dared to say. I want you to say this by faith. Say it loud. Say it so every demon and hell can hear it. The same power that raised Christ from the dead now lives in me. The same power that raised Christ from the dead now lives in me. Come on, right now, I want you to just begin to shout. I want you to begin to praise. Hallelujah. to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I love it because our God's not dead. He's alive. 
That means we walk out of this place going, well, yeah, I went to church. It was all right. No, we get to walk out saying, I just saw people get saved. I, got, I saw people get touched by the power of God. I received something on the inside. I'm not leaving this place the same, but I'm leaving changed. Hallelujah. And when you walk out of this place, remember the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, as Roman just said, is in us. Hallelujah. Well, we love all of you. For those of you that are our first, second time guests, or maybe this was the first time that you were with us, we so would love the opportunity to connect with you. So please, we ask that you would come grab a coffee on us. Uh, if you didn't get a connection card, you can grab one of those there at the coffee shop. We'll make sure we have some leaders at our, our welcome center, let you know about different groups that ha we have throughout the week. So please make sure our, our, our desire is just to serve you in whatever way we can. As well as for uh, the rest of the church, if you'll make sure to, uh, before... Just note this, next Sunday, how many of you are ready for the G4T conference? Amen. That's coming up this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We want to let you know, it's, we do call it a youth conference.